What's up, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming today. Welcome. A lot of new faces, which is awesome. Um, it's funny. It's uh, like, I mean, I speak to half three quarters of this room every week, right? So I'm thinking, well, what is the message that I can craft that they haven't yet heard? And although I haven't figured it out yet, I will. Um, <laughs> I didn't plan on speaking first. And the reason is I just like to usually go last and just kind of read the room and talk about whatever the... So, see, I don't like to go first because then I have to swear right after prayer. <laughs> um, but, you know, trying to craft something that will have an impact on all of you, um, personally and professionally. And uh, so we will uh, we'll dive deep on some things. But I also just want to talk about some, you know, just surface stuff. You know, one of the things that I think about so often is, like, everybody has this, um, well, this insecurity. Right? We all have an insecurity. We all carry an insecurity with us. Uh, no matter how tough we act, or no matter how much weight we lift, Curtis, where you at? <laughs> no, matter, no matter what we do in our day, we all carry insecurities with us. And I think it's interesting because I, um, I, got, a, I got a message from a guy on our team that was kind of new to the team. I was on the mountain at Boyne when I got this message, and, and he had watched a video where I had shared something in the past, and you know, he just sent me a real nice video, and he talked about insecurities. I'm like, fuck, everybody's insecure. Who cares? And, and I think that that's the parallel, <coughs> is that everyone is insecure in some way, short, or form. Some just fake it better. Some just fake it better. And I, I talked about this last week at our team meeting, because how many people in here, raise your hand, if you've pretended to fall asleep before? Right? Like you get in bed and you can't fucking sleep and still so you're like, okay, pretend you're sleeping. And I did that last night actually. It didn't work very well. But but that it's no different. Like you hear people say fake it till you make it, uh, whatever, whatever the friggin' term is. But I think at the end of the day, realizing, and, and what I want to talk to you about is getting out of your comfort zone, right? And, and this is that thing where it doesn't matter if you're brand new in the business, it doesn't matter if you've been in the business 20 years, really. The parallel to all of this is that we all have insecurities. We all have what I call our worst moment ever, right? And our worst moment ever, no matter who you are or how bad it was or how bad you think somebody else's was, your low is always your low. It's always your low. So I'm trying to draw a line. So what are the parallels then of all of these people? And then at the same time, why do some, other, some people outperform others? <clears throat> Right? I mean, at the end of the day, our world keeps score. And thank God, truly, that it does. So a parallel, then, is that we all have insecurities. We all share insecurities. This young lady here, if you want to introduce yourself, say hello. Me? Yeah, just stand up. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel Evers. I'm not part of the John Wentworth group. <laughs> what else do you want me to say? I think whatever the hell you want to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's very nice to be here. I'm excited to see what you guys are up to. Thanks for having me. So she reaches out to me a couple weeks ago and, and sends me a Facebook message, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. And then she re replies back, yeah, that was kind of weird. <laughs> but she reached out. We went and had lunch, had a really fun lunch. Um, don't know why we had lunch yet. I'm still kind of scratching my head on that one. Uh, but again, what is that thing that made her take action versus the thought of doing something? The thought of doing something. So today we, oh, here we go. I was terrified, but I just went with it. That's all. See, and, and I think, what is there to be terrified of? Yeah. Right? So we're trying to get ourselves into action. We all have thoughts. How do we get into action? And this is like, no matter, it doesn't have anything to do with real estate. And I think that's a cool thing that I like to talk about is, like, fuck, real estate is what we do. Right? If it's not who we are. And so I'm always just thinking, like, how do I improve personally? How do I improve personally? How do I improve personally? And then how do I recognize when I fuck great up, which is daily, right? And then how, being able to go back to that norm, that center, and then continue to get on that road of improvement. So I, I want to recognize somebody here today. Um, Jennifer Murray, if you want to stand up real quick. So I'm not even going to try to tell you what she just did because I can't. But I will tell you, it's really interesting because we were talking and she's like, man, I'm, I'm, I thought that's so cool. You did 75 hard. I don't think I could do that. And then she did this. Why don't you tell them what you just did? 
Um, I did the Disney Dopey Challenge, um, which at first was a really great idea to do. Um, uh, so it was a 5K on Friday morning, excuse me, Thursday morning. And let me tell you, all of the races that, they, that I did were at 5 a.m. in the dark. Um, so it was the 5K on Thursday, a 10K on Friday, a half marathon on Saturday, and then the full marathon on Sunday. Cool. So Hard in a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you're doing 75 hard right now, too. You're on day what? 53, I think. 53. 53. So, awesome stuff. So, this is a seminar all about 75 hard. <laughs> no, I'm serious. This is. No. Uh, Simon just completed 75 hard. He's on day 22, I believe, of phase one. Yeah, 26. Day 26. Awesome. Awesome stuff. So give him a hand as well. And the reason I bring those things up, like, I look at Jennifer and say, fuck, I could never do that. But the truth is, I just don't want to. Right? I don't want to run marathons. I don't like running. It's boring as hell to me. Um, I like to run, but I don't want to run. Like, that's super boring. Um, but I think that so many times we get involved in things that we really don't want to be involved in, and we put ourselves in a position to say yes to something that we really don't want to do. And so then we lack direction behind why we would take action. Well, I don't even want to really do this shit, so I don't want to take action. Um, if I were going running with Jen, I wouldn't start running. She would, and then I would just follow for a little while. Not very far, probably. Um, but so... When we thought about this conference, we thought about trying to trying to help people get uncomfortable, trying to help people, because I, I really believe like your comfort zone is what's killing you the most. And and you could say, yeah, but I sold so many houses. Okay, so what? What about personally? How, how are, are we doing? Um, yeah, but my personal life's great. Yeah, but you broke as fuck because you sold one house. Like, and how, how do we balance those two? Because obviously they're, they're both very important. And uh, getting uncomfortable, I think, really is just the idea of, of taking action. So for example, so many people will process in their minds over and over and over about what they should do or how they should do it instead of just doing it. And so I just kind of came up with this thing this morning, like, like think about like five seconds. You have five seconds to talk your way out of something. Right, And in real estate so often it's like, I don't want to call that guy back or shit the inspection's bad, I don't want to call that. And we start to tell ourselves these stories and, and I think that if you just, you have five seconds and you just got to take that action and that will help put you into action. And I, and I related that to this, like people always ask me like, what keeps you going, what da 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 da, like I just fucking shoot the arrow. I just shoot the arrow. And then I draw the target around wherever that thing lands. And so I just want you to think about, like, when you're in a position where you need to take action, just shoot the arrow. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. You know, as we've grown our business, a mentor of mine said to me when I was at vacillating over this decision, he's like, dude, there's nothing you're going to do that's big enough or bad enough that's going to ruin anything. So just make a decision and go. And I would say the same thing to you. Like, there's nothing that you're going to do in life. I mean, don't go rob a bank. <laughs> think, like, for 15 seconds on that one. Uh, but there's nothing that you're going to do that is going to hurt your business or your personal life except not taking action. Not taking action is the killer. And believe it or not, Todd, I have a couple of notes. I love it. It's interesting, I know. Um, and, and here's kind of the idea behind this. So who, well, every, is, is there anybody in here not in real estate? Wow. Two, three people, but you're thinking about it maybe or whatever <laughs> it may be. But there's no outside business owners. Well, we know your story. <laughs> Adam is going to be speaking soon, and Adam is, uh, well, way smarter than I am. Um, so I'm excited for that because I get to learn from him. But, but when we think about uh, skills, right? So if you're in real estate, you're trained, you're taught skills, uh, you're, you're going to trainings, you're going to seminars, you're learning all this information... But are you taking action on it? You know, I see so many times, like, I used to go to all these things, right? Tom Ferry events, we go all over the freaking country. And 
I would see so many people there just to hang out. I would see so many people there just to party. But they would never leave those conferences and take action. And I think that's one of the things that <clears throat> always separated us is that we're always taking the next step forward, we're always taking action. How do we get better? How do we get better? How do we get better? You know, how do we serve more people? How do we create a better environment for our, our, our staff? Like just continuing to want to improve. And, and I think winning, it goes back to that idea of winning. I think winning is so important uh, or having a winner's mindset. But so many people will abandon their win. They'll give up on their own win. Maybe they give up on their win because somebody else talked them out of it. Right? Maybe the people they're spending their time with don't want them to really fucking win. They tell you they do, but they don't. Uh, because your winning makes them feel like they're losing. Right? This is why it's so important the people that we're spending time with. <clears throat> and I watch people, and listen, this is not about me or our organization, I watch people step into an environment where they're surrounded with people that are winning and you start to fucking win. Like it's just that simple. And so in, in our lives, we need to surround ourselves with people in all facets, right? Business, personal, no matter what it is, like are you seeking to hang around with people that are winning, that are winners? And with that, people that will hold you accountable to the things that you say you want to do. Right? I spent some time, I don't want to say intimately, that would probably be a weird, weird word, but, but very close to a lot of the people in this organization, right? And a lot of those people call me out. They have the right to do so, you know, and that's what I want from them. That's how I'm going to improve. So the, the idea, I think, of just showing up, you know, people say, showing up is half the battle. And I'm like, that's the dumbest thing ever. Fucking anybody can show up, right? You guys showed up today. Anybody can show up. There were people that registered that didn't show up, so I guess not everybody can show up. But what are you going to do after you show up? What are you going to do after you show up? So you're going to hear a lot of great stuff today. Adam's going to give you a lot of um, great communication skills. Um, you're going to hear some great stuff from Sean Hart also. You know, you're going to get fired up. You're going to get motivated. And then what are you going to do? You know, most times people, people leave in an emotional state. They make decisions in emotional states. They declare their New Year's resolution in an emotional state. And none of it sticks because it's not tied to the one thing that, that you need to get yourselves tied to, and that's your heart. Uh, you know, everybody talks about you know, having something that is in your head, right? Having something that matters to you when you're emotional, but how do you stay in that realm? And I think you've got to tie it to your heart. You know, we've always ran this business with our heart, and it's cost us a lot of money. But I love it. But I'm okay with that, right? Like, I know the decisions I make are from my heart and, and for what I think are for the greater good. And they're not always right, but that's okay. So going back to this, this uh, getting out of your comfort zone, taking action, the fear is always, am I going to do it wrong? Am I going to say the wrong thing? Am I going to upset somebody? Am I going to... Well, you know, whatever these, these doubts are that we put in our head, especially when we start thinking for too long of time, is understanding that if, you're, if your sole focus is to serve someone else with nothing in it for you, and this is how I start my day every single day. Like, okay, people talk about, oh, I had a bad day. That's such a lame duck fucking, I hate hearing that. People talk about all of these, these things that happen in their day. Oh, I forgot to my keys in my car. Who gives a shit? You should be blessed you have, you have your car, right? People complain about how cold it is, and I'm just like, oh, my land. You live in a house. We are so conditioned by society to just complain. Like, people think complaining is, is conversation. Mm. People think complaining is conversation. We're going to get together and we're going to complain about somebody. Or we're going to complain about the weather. Or we're going to say Walden Woods coffee sucks. Like, fuck, you're just always complaining about something. And, by the way, their coffee's really good. I don't know. <laughs> I almost went the wrong way. Huh? I could have gone the wrong way. No, their coffee's really good. Uh, and I will tell you this, too. Like, I love this place. I got married here. Well, my wife and I got married here. I wasn't alone. Uh, 13 years ago. On December 20th, we're having our awards party here this Friday. 
Uh, so I just, we have our team retreat here. Like, I, I love this place, and so I hope you guys enjoy the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to skills in business, and going back to taking action, and, and going back to getting outside of your comfort zone. you got to first understand this, that nobody in here is knows more than you, no one in here is more skilled than you, no one in here had a better childhood necessarily than you. We're all very, very parallel. We all wake up in the morning. We all have shit to deal with. We all get dressed. Nobody, I don't ever want to go to the gym in the morning, right? But we do what we do. And when you're seeking to serve without, you know, this idea of, and listen, I've been broke before, right? I mean, it's, it's not like, oh, it's easy for you to say. No, I've been fucking broke. And the thing is, all the things that I share with you aren't theory. I've done them all. I've done four open houses in a weekend. Right? I've done two on Saturday, two on Sunday. So when we're like, hey, you should do open houses, they really work. It's like, no, because they work. So there's all of these things inside of real estate. However you grow your business, build your business, etc. cetera. Um, I just always want people to be mindful of, of this, is that each day you have an opportunity to go serve someone else. And I think this is, you know, people say, why are you so happy all the time? Well, because I don't have an expectation from anyone else. You know, people say, oh, that guy did me wrong. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe your expectations were too high of somebody else. What are your expectations of yourself, right? Can you wake up, go through the day uh, with, with a generous heart, focused on serving others, knowing that if you do that, without really, like, it doesn't matter if you're an agent, if you're staff, if you're a videographer, like, if your day is all about what are you going to get out of it, and you never stop searching for it. You never stop searching for that next thing. So I just find a lot of contentment in, in making my day about serving other people. Now, if I'm being honest, fuck, I could do a much better job at home, right? So that's something that I always have to look at is, okay, well, man, you're doing all of this out here, but then... You're coming home and are you living that way at home every day? Sometimes I do a really good job, but are you doing it every day? So being the one thing that 75 hard, and some of these people that don't know what 75 hard is, GTS, that, um, but if you do know what it is, it's really a mental game. It's a mental challenge. What's so funny? You, you know what GTS is? Google that shit. Google that shit. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> GTS. I just learned something. Google that. Google that. <laughs> oh, should have spilled that good coffee. Um, so, skills. Nobody's more skilled. Uh, I think people are so focused on training. And what you really need to do is just take action. Take action. Taking action creates a result. Your result, then you can look at that result, and based on that result, then you can start to tweak and learn skills, right? So I think um, if, if I'm being super just transparent, everybody in here is capable of so much more. So much more, including me, right? So this isn't a preach. Everyone in here is capable of so much more. And, and that's both personally and professionally. So then... You have to ask yourself, what are you after? And if you don't know what you're after, then man, it's so difficult to be fulfilled on a daily basis because you're just meandering through. I see people in here that I know shit they've gone through in their life that to me, like I could never go through that. And I know there's people that think that about me. But at the end of the day, that's the thing. That's what makes us all the same. And that's why it needs to, it needs to be like burned into you that Jackie Ream is the exact same person essentially today that she was three years ago. She just decided to make different choices in her life, right? She just decided I'm going all out on this thing and I'm going to get my shit together and figure this thing out. Who did you do that for? Myself and my kids. Right. Myself and my kids. Really, her kids, I know, is top of mind. So when I talk about your heart, like, I don't know, money's never going to be enough to fulfill anybody, but you need it. But what's that big thing, you know, that burning desire that you have, that having a, 
having a stronger business will provide for you. I think we all want to grow our businesses, right? We all want to, we all seek growth. We all want to make more money. We want to have a better living. And that's all great. And then we have to parallel it with our personal lives. The number one way to build, build, build skill is to take action. And so there's this interesting thing going around. It's called video. Did anybody watch a video on Facebook today or yesterday? <laughs> And who, who did not? Okay. Who did a video on Facebook today or yesterday? No. Raise your hand really high if you did. Holy fuck. I mean, that's my model. Because, I, I mean, I <coughs> they say that one minute of video watched is equivalent to 1.8 million words heard. One minute of video watch is equivalent to 1.8 million words heard. And we know we live in this video demand society, and we're all in business, and yet so few, and even, fuck, my crew. What the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> You've got to embrace this video thing. I'll tell you how important it is. Uh, Chad walks in today. I don't know Chad. Talked to him on the phone a couple times. Did some Zoom sessions. I know all about this guy. I asked him, did he bring me any kombucha? <laughs> right? Like people are, he does, he grows. What do you, you say grow? Brew. Brew. <laughs> Brews kombucha. And I just know this from his Facebook. Like I'm a, I'm a consumer the same way everybody else is. And so what stops people like, for those of you that haven't done video, especially in our crew, what, what, what is it that's stopping you? I feel like I've gotten a little further into Snapchat lately. So my videos have been that direction. I've taught what you're, I've taught what you're talking about, John. Um, the biggest thing is fear of people's opinions. Is, am I going to look bad? Are they going to think I'm ugly? Is my hair bad? Do I talk bad? Do I have a weird accent? Am I not going to get this information across? Am I only going to get four views? That right there is most people's biggest biggest hurdle. How many people know they need to do more video? There you go. Oh, there we go. So is it a skill that's stopping you from doing it? No, right? It's very simple. You just hold the thing up and you hit record. So it's not a skill. So what is it that's stopping you? You're, you're your worst critique. So you're your worst critic. So yes. at the end of the day, especially though, for me, I'll speak for myself, throughout my life outside of being critiqued by others, also critiquing myself, be it art, singing, going running, whatever, eventually when you see that this new thing, i.e. TikTok, Snapchat, internet, Facebook, Instagram, and all the other different social media sites, and you say, well, everyone else looks like they got it under control and they know what they're doing, me, this new person trying to get involved, uh, I already beat myself out of by saying, ah. Uh. Yeah, you've been talking more than five seconds, so you fucked it all up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, so that's an example. Adam had an example. Anybody else? Like, content. Like, what is it? Content. Content. Yeah, awesome. That's a big one. You think there's any content right now you could share? <laughs> all right, so we're going to do this. <laughs> Grab a partner. <laughs> You're going to each... Each get your phone. Go to Facebook. Come on, let's go. <laughs> There's go to your Facebook feed. There's a little button that says live. L I V E. I can't spell, but I can sell. No. Grab a partner. Now you gotta go horizontally. You gotta be sideways. Tie to your phone. Yeah, Todd, there's no acceptable. So you're both gonna have your phone. Get your partner. Both of you have your phone. You gotta go sideways. Yes. Shoot a little bit. Here's your content. I'm at Walden Woods. This place is amazing. Sean Hart is going to speak. He's amazing. Adam's going to speak. He's amazing. And right now, John Wentworth won't be quiet. And you messed, you messed it up already. Don't tell all the guys around here at Walden Woods today.
right now the moment of the truth. Huh? Who didn't go live? I didn't. I feel like I didn't even talk about anything. You don't have to talk about anything. So listen, content is all around you, right? So somebody that said content, clearly what they're saying is, well, it's easier just to say I don't have any content and not do the shit. Content's everywhere. If you're in real estate, just so you know, like we're a marketing company, plain and simple, and so are you. Everything you do inside of the field, inside of your day, is an opportunity to have content, right? Uh, hey, just wrote an offer at the at the inspection, at a an event at Walden Woods. Like everything is an opportunity, and I, I think I think I know I know what I what people say. I think that so often we just think. Nobody wants to hear what I have to say, right? Nobody wants to hear what I have to say, but I will guarantee you this. There is an audience for everybody, and everybody has their own audience. The cool thing about social media is you get to be authentic, and fucking no one else can be. So when you say all these other people on Instagram and all this other stuff, you know, they're flexing, they got their dope whip that they leased, right? They've shown everybody their watch that they borrowed. Like, those, that's your competition. And all you have to do is be yourself. Like the world, I, I believe, like seeks authenticity. So much so we actually made it one of our core values at our company. Because I want everyone to be super authentic. I don't want somebody, James, who I've known for a few years that just joined us, I don't want him to come here and act differently. I hired James because I like fucking James as a human being. He's never sold a house in his life. Right? So we, the world wants authenticity. And unfortunately, the other side of the world, which is that other side of social media, is all about fake, 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 fake. So how do I show up as my authentic self every time? And I, this is the thing of, of trying to get yourself out of your comfort zone. How do I show up as my authentic self every time? you got to understand um, that God made you as you are, perfect in his image. And so many people fail to just really grasp the power of that. And I don't know where, all, where you guys all stand, and it's, you know, it's, it's none of my business. I know where I stand, and you're at my conference, so that's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> but, but just that one thing, to understand the depth of that, man, it's very free. You know, when I was growing our real estate business, you know, and I was starting to earn some money, and when I say I was broke, I mean, I was flat-ass broke. I was renting a house, a, a shithole, for $800 a month, and I had a fucking roommate that had help pay for it, right? So I know what it's like. 12 years ago, it wasn't like it's 30 years ago. So much can change so fast if you have a will to win and you can stay consistent. You know, I look, Stacy Peters is here, and uh, I mean, she was my first assistant. I paid her two, what, how much? Two hundred dollars a week. Two hundred dollars a week cash. And she said to me one day, she's like, "Do you think I'll have a job next year?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah." I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but this 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 will to win, and, and I got off track there a little bit because I see Stacy sitting here, and it just gets me emotional. But going from twelve years ago, flat ass broke, to now, without any skills, better than any of you. I can't, I mean, I can't fucking spell anything. Andy, Andy's always making fun of me for that. Uh, <laughs> but what is it? Your, you are, your. <laughs> what is it? Two, two, two. Two, 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 two much twos. <laughs> um, but, but just grasping that, and I think, you know, when I, when I first, uh, as I said, when I started doing well and was making some money and could, could feed myself, um, I still didn't have a relationship at all with the Lord. And so I share this story with you because this was that moment where I really understood. And, and that's kind of what people, how can you not be authentic? That's a question you should ask. How can you not be authentic? If you understand that piece, that God created you in his image. And so when, when I finally met that relation, when I uh, met the Lord at a men's retreat that I went to because I thought it'd be good for business, it really just freed me. It really opened my eyes to understand that like every single day what we go through is so minimal. 
I mean, in the grand scheme of things, and, and unless we're experiencing some type of a tragedy, right? That's never minimal. But the things that we that we make a big deal are so minimal. The things that we gossip about, the things that we talk about, they're so minimal. And to to show up as your authentic self, I think, is really how you glorify God. Plain and simple. He created you as he wanted you to be, but yet you allow social media to tell you to be somebody different. Or you allow the friends you hang out with, or the people you roll with, or the fucking guys standing around the coffee machine at work make you feel like you need to be somebody else. And so, you know, it's such an interesting thing because it's the most difficult thing to get across to somebody, right? Because even myself, I mean, I thought about what I was going to wear today. Normally I don't. I just throw some shit on and leave, right? So it, it's, a, it's a constant evolving where we're always thinking about how we're going to be perceived. And so going, you know, going live or doing a video, these are part of our business, things that we need to do in our business to grow our business. And so the same way that I feel like showing up authentic is, is how I would glorify God, I think that you... Doing everything you can do inside of your business is how you honor your family. Like, if you're going to take time to be away from your family, shouldn't you check all the boxes and everything that you do? Shouldn't you send a video to the, the, guy, the Zillow lead you just hung up with after you scheduled an appointment? Hey, just so you can put a name to a face, uh, I'll see you today at 5 o'clock. And then the next morning after you showed him the house, same thing, following back up with video. If you guys will really start applying video to everything you do in your business, I'm telling you, it will have a massive impact. Time and time again, I've gone somewhere just from Facebook where people say, man, you know, I watched this thing you talk about on Facebook. I'm like, I don't remember talking about the shit. There is an audience for everyone. Your audience isn't mine and my audience isn't yours. And I think so often people look at, they post something on Facebook and, and all they're tied to is, what was the outcome? How many likes did I get? How many fucking views did I get? And none of that matters. It just takes one. It just takes the right one. And I'm going to share one more story with you and then get the hell out of the way and just kind of reiterate why this is so important. I had a gal call me, and Simon knows this story, Miss Wayne. Um, she reached out, this was a few years ago, I don't know, two or three years ago. She wanted me to come out of her house, and she, when, when I got there, she said, it's middle of nowhere, dirt road, big acreage. And I get there, and it's a little old lady. She's probably, I would say, 70, by herself. And I'm thinking to myself, what the heck, man? I'd be scared to have somebody come out of my house if I were in her situation in this location, right? And she said, and so we talked about that. And she said, well, I see you on Facebook all the time, and so I trusted having you out to my house. So, man, it, it makes a big impact and you are in marketing, so you've got to be seen. You've got to be willing to put yourself uh, out there, if you will. I know it feels like you're putting yourself out there. And you just have to be authentic. You don't have to worry about how you sound because, believe it or not, you sound just like you sound. Whether you're on video or not. You look just like you look, whether you know it or not. Uh, you know, the content is everywhere. It's everywhere. You just got to take the action. Get out of that five-second zone and just take action in the moment. So today, so many people are going to leave. What's content? First thing I, you can do, video about real estate and what you learned today. And not from my dumb ass, but these guys will teach you more stuff than me. What's the next piece of content? I don't know. Do you have an appointment today? What's the next piece of content? You have a family. You have a house. You have a car. Like There's so many things. And... One minute of video is worth 1.8 million words heard. So you've got to be seen. You've got to jump on video. And I, and I challenge you to do that. Like, if you think about what is something critical you can do in your business over the next 30 days and commit on paper to yourself to do three videos a day, that's it. That's not very many. That's one in the morning, one at noon, one at night. Three a day. But it's 90 over a month. And that 90 will have a huge impact on your business. I can promise you that.
So who can commit to that? Who can commit to three a day for 30 days? This guy's not even fucking real estate. Three days. <laughs> who can commit to three videos a day? You guys all want the best business. You all want to grow your business. You all want to make more money. Three a day for 30 days. Raise your hand real tall so I can see who's scared. Katie's scared. Kaylee's scared. Curtis is scared. Jason was scared until he knew he was going to call his fucking name. Jackie's scared. We're all scared. 30 days. Three videos a day, 30 days. Stacy Doll, are you scared? Huh? She's doing it. She's doing it anyway. She's doing it. So listen, here's one last thing I want to share with you. Who set a New Year's resolution? None of you fuckers? <laughs> one person set a New Year's resolution? You told us beforehand not to. <laughs> there it is. There it is. You don't need him. You said the bullshit. <laughs> well, I, I, I just, now I only have to break one person's heart. <laughs> When we put a target that is super far off, it's super hard to do. You know, we put a New Year's resolution, I'm going to do this by the end of 2022. And it's like, fuck, how, how are you going to, I mean, it's so far away. So another thing that I think is really powerful for your business, and we do this inside of our organization, we have uh, weekly commitment groups. And so if you think about like three critical tasks that you're going to do in a day, and Simon I know is working on this inside of 75 Heart because it's part of that, but what are three to critical tasks that you need to do inside of a day every day. If you start writing those down the night before or in the morning, listen, if you get those three things done every day throughout the year, I promise you, you're, you will have an amazing business when you get to 2022. So it's the little things you do daily, not that one big thing you think you're going to do. That one big thing is going to get away from you. What are you going to do on the daily that you know will have a positive outcome for you personally and professionally? So when I say three videos a day for 30 days, fuck, that's so easy. But you either, you either believe it doesn't work or you're just too scared to do it. And if you're too afraid to do it, then you probably should go home and spend more time with your family because you're not getting any work done. If you're not jumping on this video thing and making known what you're doing in the field every single day because you are a marketing company for yourself. Love you guys.